All right, Jay, let's switch to the defense, and let's start with this question. How, how much money did Johnny Newton make the last two weeks? Oh, my gosh. Boy, I mean, you, you, there was 14 NFL scouts sitting up by us in, in the press box, Jay, and with Chop Robinson, Kalen King, as you said, um, you know, all these guys on, on Penn State who are projected first-round draft picks or second-round draft picks, Johnny Newton was the best player on the field. Oh, absolutely. I mean, I'm sitting there in Big Ten Network watching all the games, right, and we're sitting there and saying he's the best football player on the field. Usually we give – our Saturday standouts on the final drive to a winner, mm -hmm. a, a team that, that wins, a player that is on a winning team. I wanted to give it to Johnny Newton. I, I, I quite frankly, when you talk about, I, I'm not necessarily looking, I know people like to look at sacks. I know people like to look at pressures or tackles for us. I look at disruption. You look at the amount of disruption he caused for the linemen of Penn State on run plays near the goal line, on the field goal, on pass plays, on getting Gabe Ackes a sack because of his pressure. It, his get off's incredible, number one. And I don't think there's a guard in this league that can pass block him at all. And they like to match him up on a guard. And he usually makes them look silly. It was a long day for some of those Penn State guards. They either ended up on their back or chasing Johnny Newton all around. Yeah, and I want to bring up Aaron Henry. Uh, one thing he did, and we saw this in the bowl game, they seem to run that 5-1-5 five, five a little bit sure. more. Jay, I, you could probably have more knowledge of this, but it gets Johnny Newton and, and some of these outside linebackers who I thought had their best games in one-on-one -on -one opportunities. And Johnny Newton, one-on-one -on -one opportunities, is is uh, it's tough for, for guards in the Big Ten, as you said. So what did you see from Aaron Henry adjustment-wise? How did they look different, if at all? So the first of all, that's a, that's a, that's a good pickup by you. And, and just so you know, you know, I love how people can – we can make up whatever numbers, uh, you know, 5 one five. Yeah, yeah. You could say the outside linebackers are linebacker. You could say our Akis and Coleman are linebackers. So then we turn into a 3-3-5, three, three, right? Sure. So I mean, there's all kinds of ways we could we could spit it. Um, but as far as the way it looks lined up, it certainly does look like a 5 one five. And I think what he's trying to do is he's trying to get his best 11 on the field, okay? Probably, probably feels right now – that he maybe has with Matthew Bailey in, I know he wasn't hurt, probably has a little bit more depth at DB than linebacker. Maybe, I don't know. Uh, I think Tariq Barnes is really solid, but Rosiak's young and Kruitz is young, right? And so I think it's a combination of getting the best love on the field, but also giving them a chance, okay, to get favorable matchups. And I think that's what we saw in the defensive line where we have to see the athleticism of, of Johnny Newton. I know Keith was banged up in this game. Uh, according to Brett, but but Gabe Akis and Seth Coleman get the matchups they wanted, and I think that was a good adjustment by by Aaron Henry and and the staff to say, hey, here's what we're going to do. But more importantly, I thought they were they just felt more comfortable in that set. The defense felt more comfortable in that set, and so I think it's what do my guys like to play? Not only is it like who's the best eleven, let's give them the best chance, but what do they like? And I felt like. They liked playing kind of the style they were playing. It wasn't exotic. They were certainly just lining up and trying to play sound technique. And, and for the most part, through three quarters, did an excellent job. Yeah, they, they bothered the heck out of uh, Drew Aller, maybe not playing a dual threat guy as much. I mean, Drew could sure. prolong plays. Uh, but I mean, with their run defense, was was really impressive. Jay and I thought Matthew Bailey was a big part of that early. I thought Clayton Bush was really good in, in run support. The corners were better in run support. Like, what did you see uh, from that run defense to to keep Nick Singleton, you know, and and Catron Allen really under wraps for most of the game until that that late touchdown by Singleton. Well, let's not forget Nick Singleton was the Gatorade Player of the Year, um, like for the country, not just like <laughs> like like we're happy we get one. You know, Hank Beatty, I think, was the Gatorade Player of the Year for Illinois. That's great, but this guy was the, the Gatorade Player of the Year for the country. And and Catron Allen, um, uh, all those run, all those Penn State running backs, I always say they're always built different. All big tree trunk legs and everything might be the white pants or might just be just <laughs> legit. Those are probably the two best backs you'll probably see all year. I mean, the combo of them. I mean, there's going to be other backs there, but as far as having two backs like that. So one thing I thought that Matthew Bailey really, really adds is his size is, is a factor. It, it's, it's a big factor. His ability to run fill is a big factor when it comes. It, it felt like Sidney Brown's ability to fill a hole, right? And, and I think that's what we kind of miss. I think Miles Scott, is smart, but let's be honest, he's a little bit undersized. There's a reason that Miles Scott was 
you know, a walk on for years because he didn't necessarily have the measurables of other guys. Not saying he's not a good football player, not saying he's not going to be a good football player. He simply doesn't have the measurables, right? I think Xavier Scott's going to be a really good football player. He, he flashes. He, he doesn't yes. necessarily play perfect games because he, he and no DB does. But I think Xavier Scott has the attitude and kind of that swagger of anybody that kind of those last DBs had. So I think Xavier Scott's going to be solid. But I would say this. It started up front with the pressure. How did they stop? I stopped the run. You get them in second and long, third and manageable, right? So they get off schedule. You get a guy in Drew Aller, first road start. Oh, he's talented. I was impressed. Other than some of the drive routes that Penn State ran, a drive route is five yards across the field. We covered pretty good. Mm -hmm. We did, we struggle a little bit, some of on the drive route concepts and whatnot. They kind of got away from us in man coverage. But as far as the deep balls, we harassed Aller enough, got his eyes down, and it showed that our DBs, if we get pressure on somebody, don't make them cover forever, they, they can be decent, right? And so um, all in all, I just thought Bailey Bailey added a lot uh, when he was in. I thought the pressure was huge. Better on first and second down led us to have opportunities to really pin our ears back as a pass rusher. Because here's the deal. As a pass rusher, I've actually got – you might be able to find out it's a pass right away by watching the game. But if I'm pass rushing, I've got to identify, how is this guy attacking me? Is he backing up? Is he coming forward? When you know that's a passing down and they have to pass, you can really tee off from a pass rush perspective. How sustainable is this, Jay, for, for the defense? Like how much – you know, was this a building factor? You hope it's not an outlier, right? So how sustainable? Right, yeah. Well, one, I don't think it was some big exotic game plan. I just right. think it was, I just think it was, let's line up with our best 11 and give them a chance to win, right? Now, I will say, I think there's a significant drop off in our second string D-line. Okay. No question. Um, Johnny played they, 74 snaps. Keith played 70 in this game. Yeah, they, so, they played about 40 in the first game. Here's the deal. They, they said – we want to make sure they don't have more plays uh, than they need to, especially early in the season. Well, it was do or die to get stops because the offense kept giving the ball back. Right. And I was watching how much they were going to get, you know, maybe Bryce Barnes in there or somebody else in there for that D line. And it wasn't a ton early in that football game. I mean, maybe two or three plays that got in, but there's a significant drop off in pressure the moment those guys get out. We've got to build depth. I guess I'm, I'm probably most concerned about that because I'm not sure we have the depth at D-line that we really need to be elite. Um, so that 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 concerned me. I thought the DBs played better, though. So that, that, was, that was beneficial. It's kind of what you expected, the D-line be dominant, that starting group, and then the secondary is a little bit better because of it, right? Like it's right, kind of right. – you expect the, the D-line to really help that secondary, and I thought that was the case. That was that was 100% the case. I mean, I know you didn't get a ton of sacks on Aller. You, you, you got a few, but he was pressured, and he got his eyes down. He didn't keep his eyes down the field when he was pressured. There was a couple guys wide open that he could have hit, but because his eyes weren't downfield and he was under pressure, wasn't able to do that. So – um Overall, I think you asked, is it sustainable? I think it is sustainable, right? I don't know about the depth issue that we have on the D-line, but I think we're going to get better. Uh, this is – I'm not going to say this is the best offense they're going to face. I thought it was coming in. It might be. They're not executing at a great level right now compared to the first two games, but it's certainly some of the best athletes we'll see in the running game at offensive tackle. Maybe not on the edge. I think that probably belongs to Ohio State if they saw him in the championship game, but as far as anybody, you know, on their schedule moving forward, pretty close.